Hey and welcome! In this video we will build a web app using Streamlit and Assembly AI that has the power to transcribe YouTube videos just from their link. This will be a two-part tutorial. In this video we will write the code that transcribes a YouTube video. In the next video we will go into the details of a Streamlit application and make it more user-friendly. So once we're done with it, this is what the app will look like. It will have the power to get a YouTube link as input, show the video in a player, and also display the transcription of the video to the user below the video. And we will be able to create the transcript thanks to Assembly AI. Assembly AI provides an easy to use API to automatically transcribe audio and video files with human level accuracy. And you can sign up for Assembly AI for free too. I am using the free API token they have for this tutorial. And once you sign up for a free account, you get three hours of audio transcription per month. To follow along in the tutorial and build your own app too, don't forget to get the free API token through the link in the description. All right, so now we can get started with the project. I will show you how to do this project on a step-by-step -step manner. First, I will show you the project structure, and then we will install all the libraries and dependencies that we need. Uh, after we will create a Streamlit application, kind of a base application, that will be a empty web app. And then later we will fill it with the code that we need to uh, transcribe the file. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to do is to create a project folder. I will do that on my desktop and call the project YouTube Transcriber. Once I've done that, I can add the files that I need in there. The first one is, of course, the main uh, web application uh, file, Python file. So for that one, for now, I'm only importing Streamlit. So this is just to create the project. Uh, I will call this one again YouTube Transcriber. Uh, this will be the main project that will, this will be the main file we will run the project on, but I also need one other file in there, which will be the configuration file. So in there, I'm going to keep my free authentication key that I got from uh, assembly AI. So for that one, I will just, for now, I'll leave it empty, but you know, your API key will go in there. Uh, this one, I'm also going to save in my folder under the name configure.py. Once we're done with this, the next thing is to download the dependencies, of course. So the first dependency I have, of course, is Streamlit, right? So I will install Streamlit using pip. I will take a second. And the next thing that I want to install is this library called YouTube DL. This library helps us download YouTube videos uh, from YouTube. So I will also really quickly install it using pip. I already had that on my computer, so it didn't take long. It might take a tad longer for you. The next thing that we want to install is a library called FFMPEG. Uh, so this library helps us deal with video and audio files, specifically for this one, video files, of course. Um, so it's a little bit trickier to download or install than the other libraries, and it's different for Microsoft and Mac OS. Um, it's still very simple though. So what we need to do is to go to their downloads webpage. I will leave the link and everything that you need in the description. Also for windows, you just need to choose the correct one and download these files and put them anywhere. This could be in your, on your desktop. This could be in the file, your project file, whenever or folder, wherever you want. And later while we're uh, going further in the project, I will show you where you need to specify where you put them so that your uh, project can find or your app can find and run them when needed. For macOS, it's a bit different. We just need to download them again. After downloading, I need to unzip them. So the next thing that I want to do is to put them in a place where my project can find them when it wants to uh, run them, right? When it needs to run them. So what I'm going to do for this is to put them at a place and then add this place to the path. Uh, a path is basically a place where your computer checks to see if there are any executable files. Uh, so for that, I'm going to go where they are, which is a desktop. And then I am going to copy them to a specific place on my computer so that I can add that later to the path and then my computer will know where to find them. But this could be different for you. If you want, you can only add them to your project uh, folder and then point the path to that place, but it's kind of up to you. 
once this is done, I all of course need to specify the path and tell the computer that that, that is, is the place where it needs to look at. So open this file in any of the editors that you like and add one extra line at the end, specifying where it needs to look for these executables. And save and quit. All right, so this basically finalizes everything that we need to do in terms of dependencies. Next thing that I want to do is to create my Streamlit application, to kind of start filling it with things. Um, one thing I can do is first to create a title, of course. I will call it an easy way to transcribe YouTube videos. And we can already even have a text input where people can uh, input the YouTube links that they want to transcribe. All right, so uh, let's start with this for now and then see how our application looks. To run the Streamlit application, all you need to do is run Streamlit, run and the name of your uh, application, but we're not in the folder yet. So I'll first go there. All right, so this is what our application looks like. For now, it doesn't do anything. I can fill it with whatever. And, uh, but we have a nice title and we have a way of also uh, collecting the input. So next, let's look into how to start developing the code to download the YouTube video, turn it into an audio file, and then transcribe it. To do this, we're going to need to set up some more things uh, in our code specifically. So as you know, we downloaded some of the uh, libraries that we want to use. So we need to set up some options and constants to be able to use these libraries and also to use the assembly AI API. The first thing that we want to set up is the YouTube DL library. So as I said, we're first going to change these uh, YouTube videos into audio files and then we're going to save them to our local computer. Uh, for that one, we are using the best audio formats. Uh, we are going to turn them into MP3s. Um, and then we're going to save them on our computers using this file name. So it's going to be the ID of the YouTube video plus the extension, which is MP3. Uh, one other thing here, as I mentioned, we are going to, uh, there are different processes to uh, use the FFMPEG library. So if you are on a Windows computer, here is where you need to specify where you keep those uh, executable files that we downloaded. So don't forget to change that here. So this is to use the YouTube DL and the FFMPEG library. The next thing that we want to set up is how to use the assembly AI API, of course. So from assembly AI, we're going to use two endpoints. One of them is going to be the upload endpoint. That's going to help us upload the audio file that we have locally to their servers. And the second one is going to be the transcript endpoint. So, you know, very easy to understandable from the name also it's going to transcribe the audio file that we, are going, we, we will upload to their system. Uh, for that one, of course, we need to set up uh, a header specifically for authentication. If you remember, we have a separate file here, configure.py, where we are going to have our authentication key. Uh, so now that we're setting this up, let's go and get our free API token from assembly AI. It's very easy to get a free API token from Assembly AI. You can either go to assemblyai.com or use the link in the description to uh, end up at this page where you can sign up for a free API token. Uh, it's very easy. Just say start now for free, create an account and then activate your account. And then finally you can uh, reach your own API key. So at the end, once you have your API key, you're going to end up at a page like this and here you will be able to see your API key. So I'm just going to click to copy this one and then add it here. And that's all I need to do. So now when I want to use assembly AI, I have everything set up and the authorization will work perfectly. And the last constant that I want to specify is chunk size. Chunk size is, is something that we're going to be uh, specifying while we are uploading the file. So in case the audio file is a very big file, we want to upload it in chunks and not all in one go. So now for the actual transcription part of this project, uh, I will keep everything in the same function as much as I can. So it's easier to call from the Streamlit uh, application. It will just be like a one line where we can uh, read the link from the user input and then start transcribing using assembly AI's API. 
uh, I'll cre create this function now. And of course it needs a, it needs the link as an argument. All right, so the first part of this function is going to be downloading the video, right? So what I do here is I use the YouTube DL library to get the link, strip it from any blank spaces that might be before the link or after the link, and then feed it to the YouTube DL library and have it save it to my desktop or wherever I want to save it using this uh, output format that we, or the naming that we specified before. Um, so just to kind of try that this actually works, I want to integrate this uh, function to my uh, Streamlit application already. So link is going to be something that I get from the text input of the user. And then I'm going to call this function. Yeah, and then see uh, what happens. So I will run this one. Go see that my application is rerun. So of course we get this error now saying that uh, zero or empty string is not a valid URL because we don't have a default URL. So I'm just going to go here and add a default URL uh, even before the user has inputted anything. I'll rerun the application. So and now nothing is happening in the stream side, of course, because that's because we are downloading the video. So if you see, uh, if you come back to your terminal, you will actually see that the uh, application started downloading um, the video. And you can see a percentage here. And this is, of course, going to take some time because you're downloading a video and you're going to save it as an audio at your local file system. So we're going to have to wait for this uh, video to be downloaded. So once this is done, we will see the saved mp3 to the YouTube video ID.mp3 uh, line here. So actually, when you go to your file or for in your folder, you will see that it is uh, downloaded as an audio file here. You can even start listening to it. And that is actually the correct uh, file. So that's perfect. Now we have the audio file on our laptop. All we need to do is to upload it to the assembly AI's uh, platform or servers, and then uh, ask it to be transcribed. So from now on, once I have the uh, file downloaded, the audio file downloaded and saved into my system, what we need to do is to upload it to assembly AI. So as you remember, we already set up the headers, we set up the authentication and everything. We uh, specified upload endpoint and this is very simple, just using the requests library of Python. You can easily post to um, assembly AI's upload endpoint uh, using the header, of course, uh, with the authentication and specifying the data. And we know where the save location is because we just did it. Um, and we are just starting the upload uh, right now. So um, after we've done this, the next thing that we want to do is to start, start the transcription. And it is also very similar again. Here is how we do that. Basically, we are sending a transcription request to Assembly AI, right? One of the things that we passed to it is the audio URL that we actually got as a response to our uh, uploading the audio to the Assembly AI servers. Um, additional to that, we are also passing if we are interested in learning what category this audio file belongs to or not. Um, for that one, I will create another argument so we can decide that on the go later if we want to so depending on that argument we will decide if we want categories uh, as a return um, in return or not uh, and again using the requests library of python we are using the transcript endpoint and this little json uh, we just created a json variable we just created and the headers for authentication we will create the transcript uh, request. So once this request is sent, basically assembly AI starts transcribing the file. But what we want to do is to have a way of checking if the audio file has been transcribed already or not. So that's why in the transcript response, we are able to get an ID. So this is the ID that belongs to that audio file that we want it transcribed. And once we get that ID, we can create a polling endpoint variable where we have the 
transcript endpoint URL that we specified before earlier in this code, and also the ID that uh, assembly AI returned to us belonging to the audio file that we want to transcribe. And using this, we can check if this file has been transcribed already or not. And to end this function, what I'm going to do is basically just add a little communication here that the audio file has started being transcribed uh, at assembly AI and I'm going to return the polling endpoint to back to my uh, streamed application so that I can check when I want to if the transcription is complete so that I can show the transcription once it's complete. So let's just save this and run the streamed application again to see that everything is working correctly. So I will just go and say rerun here and of course I needed to update my transcribe from link oh a little typo from link arguments to include category i'll just say false for now i don't really want the categories so now i can see come and see here again that the video is being downloaded so once it's downloaded then we're able to uh, follow along with the video being uh, saved to my local system and also uploaded and then uh, starting the transcription. Nice, so now we can see that uh, our file was saved uh, locally, which is here, and then it was uploaded to assembly AI, and now it's being transcribed to assembly AI. So if you come here, of course, now you're not going to be able to see anything, but we know that the at least the code is working. So from now on, what I want to do is more on the streamlit side of things. But we will get to that in the next part of this tutorial. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and maybe even subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about this video, you can leave them in the comment section. But before you leave, definitely don't forget to go and grab your free API token from Assembly AI using the link in the description. I'll see you in the second part.